What's up YouTube and welcome back for part 20 of the STI build. Probably the finale. Uh, in this episode we're going to crank the key and start the engine. Got a couple small things to do beforehand. I'm not going to you know, waste your time and, and show it to you but I, I've got the system filled with coolant and Tyler was over the other night and he was underneath the car and I had I told him to actually have a good look around and he did spot a little tiny bit of coolant coming out of one of the heater hoses and it's still got the spring clamps on it so I'm gonna put some gear clamps on on those heater hoses and um, basically fill the oil filter fill the engine with oil and tomorrow morning he's gonna come over we're gonna put a map into the car and turn the key so hopefully we can go for a drive put the mileage on the car that we need to bring it back drop the oil put in the first addition of break-in oil and maybe go for another drive so long as everything's okay but uh, so yeah I do plan this to be a startup and driving video so I'm just gonna go ahead and do those couple little things that I need to do lower the car off the jack stands and make sure it's prepped for tomorrow morning Okay, so I've got the heater hose clamps changed out, did leak out coolant, I gave a good, good spray of air to try and get rid of all the excess coolant that's built. Um, got the new clamps on and the system refilled with coolant. Uh, they appear to be dry. The hoses feel still nice and dry, so hopefully they stay that way. Be something to keep an eye on. And uh, I've got the uh, oil filter all filled with oil, let it sit and kept on filling it so it was nice to the top, got it threaded in place and ended up putting 5 liters of 5W30 conventional oil. They want 530 conventional for the first 50 miles, 65, 70 kilometers, whatever. And they want to use it as a flush. You know, basically just any of the you know the fine particles of metal that might build up from bearings just breaking in that initial turn couple turns and whatever might have been left in the engine will get flushed to the oil pan and that's the time to get rid of it so we've got some Penzoil 530 in it now and actually I just posted a nice undershot pic of kind of you know the headers coming around the new oil pan and uh, just to kind of display I've got the oil filter in place so I I actually promised Tyler that I, I would take this roof wrap off. Uh, he doesn't, kind of wants to see what's underneath of it. Um, but he just doesn't want it off on there anymore. It's starting to come apart in some places. And uh, the only thing is I've got to, I've got to get this guy off. And I'm starting to got it, got it loose over here. But it's really, someone's, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's on there really good. But he wants to obviously reuse it, and we don't want to leave any of the wrap there. So, I'm gonna peel everything off the Sirius radio antenna, and then uh, go go about trying to get this off. On top of grain, and I'm sinking them birdies. A song a week, yeah, I've done it for thirty. You never heard me when well, I'm gone for fifty. I ain't talking no sense. Someone call up a ditty. Now we fucking up the city, and I'm making them waves like Max B back in the day, flipping them tapes. I don't. Give a fuck what you really gotta say Learn to get up off your ass and put in work Every day, every day, motherfucker You ain't really doing shit Except sitting on your ass Typing comments like a bitch All about my grind like a king like a They king. just wanna see the boy fucking up the ring I don't wanna talk about dying my head. my head They just wanna see a motherfucker act scared I don't really care about showing your guy I don't really care about showing your squad Just like ASAP and looking just like ASAP. Trust me, hit that playback. Homie, that's a great fact. I pray you make your way back. I never care, never care, I never will, never will, I never care, never care, I never will, never will, I never care, never care, I never will, never will, I never care, never care, I never will. And from Connecticut, I've been repping it. Homies, you 
used to celibate Who now irrelevant Fuck a pessimist and my president I'm so eloquent and excellent And that's really just an estimate Ripping them flowers, ripping them hearts Fuck out girls I've been busy shopping off of the golf Fuck being tall, what's up being house? House, cocaine, oh po- So it's the following morning I'm finally up I uh, spent a long time on this roof last night For no reason at all That That carbon fiber wrap is horrible stuff. The wrap has like a textured weave to it and it literally was tearing right along the weave. Um, so if you if you if you got it too hot then it was just ripping off in small pieces and if you left it too cold it would start tearing along that weave. So there's just a I mean that one piece that I kind of held up that was like one of the biggest pieces I got off. Then I had to pop these off to get the wrap that was in behind it and raise the sunroof or put the sunroof back so I could get the wrap that was around it. That, uh, that piece that sat here had actually torn the vinyl wrap and it was starting to halfway come off actually. So we kind of wondered if the original owner actually covered the roof with the wrap to hide something. And uh, so right here, some really fine scratches that could be buffed out. And then over on the other corner, there's a little dimple down in the car. Uh, it looks like maybe they dabbed a little bit of touch-up paint in it as well. So, I mean, the, the car's body's in really good shape. And there's no rust on it. and uh, But it's come to the point where, you know, there's these little nicks and chips everywhere. Tiny little scratches. And uh, I think you should probably buff, do a really nice buff job for the summer. So finally last, I've got to actually wire the gauges to ignition power. And once that's finished, um, Tyler will probably show up by then. We're going to get ready to put the tune into the car. Turn the key. So I've got the gauges all wired to ignition power. Uh, Tyler showed up. We ended up going to the parts store and got that uh, vacuum line. But the we needed to put in a little adapter because the the, the port on the wastegate is so much larger than the port on the boost controller. So so now we're at the point. He's got the access port plugged in, and we're going to put what they call the valet mode uh, tune into the car. So it is rated for 1050 cc injectors, but it only allowed the car to rev up to 3,800 RPM. Be able to just drive the car around and get some mileage put onto it. All right, so bang the bang the new tune in there. It's actually surprising how quickly it will go in. So he's got to take a a previous dyno tune that was on the car out of it. That's rated for the factory injectors. just because we want this car to start up idle properly and actually be able to drive so and that should be it so now that we have a tune in the car and we want to run it um, we don't actually want it to fire up right away so I've got the crank sensor unplugged should kill off our ignition and the fuel pump fuse is still removed we want to crank, 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 crank the engine until maybe we see a little bit of oil pressure pop up on the gauge. And at that point, it'll tell me that generally there's oil going through the entire engine, or most of it anyway. And if we have to, if we end up cranking it like extensively long and don't see oil pressure, I'll just have to assume that we've got some good oil pressure about to happen and uh, probably start it up after that. Turn the key in the on position, you should hear the fuel pump kick on. Uh, fuck, I could be hearing it. Holy fuck! That's a little noisy pump. Jesus Christ. Okay, off. Okay, turn the key on again. Okay, we can definitely hear lots of fuel coming up to the front. Turn it off. Again. <laughs> we 
okay, everything looks really good. It sounds, it sounds like most of the air is making its way back to the tank, so we're going to go off, toggle one more time on. And I, I, we're going to do it another time. Okay, that, that sounds a lot better. So I'm going to say the system sounds to be fully primed. <clears throat> Cross your fingers. And start this car up. really loud cold Okay, so here we go for the first drive. Um, wish us luck. <laughs> wow, those solid mounts, man. Pressure, air fuel's looking good so far. We don't really know about the drivability because of uh, the TGVs haven't, the codes haven't been deleted, and the uh, and the same with the air injection pump.
So we went on our first drive. We actually stopped at Tim Hortons, got some coffee and something, a bite, quick bite to eat. Headed down the highway, did that trip a couple times. We've put 80 kilometers on the engine. So now it's time to drop the oil and put in the first break-in oil. So we've, we're gonna be using modal 10W40 break-in oil. And uh, they didn't actually specify the, the temperature or weight for the oil. And this is what Tyler found available. So uh, because it is 40 weight and that's what they're going to be using afterwards, I think it's absolutely fine to use. And uh, hopefully the 5 liters are just over is going to cover it again. A few small issues on the, on the road test. Um, lack of power. And that's probably due to the tune and possibly the codes that are setting because of the TGV deletes and the secondary air injection delete. Um, we don't actually have the Cobb access tuner to start trying to modify the, the map and, and change it so that it deletes those codes out of there. So we just kind of took it easy and uh, I drove it for the first time and just tried to stay in around 2500, 3000 RPM. And uh, Tyler took it for the second drive and everything worked out good. There's no leaks. Uh, the exhaust still has a little bit of a stink to it, still burning off a little bit. But uh, I'm ready to do this oil change and probably send him on his way. So first oil change is done. Tyler's ready to get going. Now hopefully the tuner can make good things happen with it. And Shit. He's got his rear plate still covered. You can hear how loud it is. <laughs> so I just had to text him, tell him that we left that rag over top of the license plate. <laughs> but he's probably just going up the street because he's got to come back for his truck anyway. But yeah, I am very, uh, very satisfied and pleased that that went the way it was supposed to. And uh, it just takes a lot off my shoulders. So I'm kind of hoping that I will get to the wagon soon enough. Uh, I kind of need to start with taking that block and putting it over on the jet, on the engine stand and at least being able to pop the other pistons out, size up the new ones, see if i got to do anything with the rings, and put those pistons in. I obviously got to do a major cleanup of this place. So there will be a, definitely another video of that car, uh, especially when it finally gets dyno-tuned, comes back into town, and we'll definitely go for a run with it, see what kind of how it's actually making, how it sounds. So yeah, I've got two of my own bigger builds coming in. I've got to do basically the same type of job on my own wagon, and then I still plan to swap the 240, so either uh, tonight or maybe at the start of the week, I will actually order the RB engine and uh, ha hopefully have it sitting here in another week or two. But if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button for me leave your questions and comments further down below and i'll see you in the next one